Hey, this is Greg from the Dillinger Escape Plan. This is Liam. And you're being watched by Nerve TV. The name Dillinger Escape Plan, is it an escape for us? I think uh, at least the touring aspect of it is certainly an escape. Or is the rest of our life an escape from touring yeah, right. at this point? <laughs> touring my living room is an escape from tour. There's starting to become like a shift from like, yeah, we're going on tour to like, yeah, we're on tour. Yeah, yeah this is what we do, you know? Yeah. I love what we do, but it's not to say that there's not a lot of sacrifice involved. You know, when I talk to my friends about what I do and they're like, oh, it's gotta be great, and then I tell them some horror story, they're like, I'd rather stay home. It's not the means to an end, it's like, that is it. That's know? the point. Yeah. yeah. We're repulsed by the idea of making a living and actually being able to make any money. So like, we just like, let's try our hardest to never, ever, ever be able to, yeah. you let's know. Let's make the most obnoxious <laughs> music that anybody has ever heard. I think as musicians you grow up with this insatiable urge to want to hear everything and eventually you can't find it so then you have the responsibility to make it. There's really no other way to kind of you know yeah. satisfy that. It's our reaction to kind of being bored and everything being predictable. We're trying to make that music that to us is exciting and stands the test of time and isn't, you know, easily digested in one or two lessons. You have to wake people up. You have to break them out of their comfort zone immediately so that they snap into focus, you know, and we view their live shows the same way. Besides the fact that we really feel energized by this music on stage to the point where we can't stand still, there is a certain confrontational attitude where, like I said before, you have to wake someone up immediately. Our attitude is the is the bigger deal than the music, and the music is an extension of our attitude. It's not just about you know getting in a mosh pit and beating the piss out of someone. I mean, there has right to now. be a deeper connection, you know. But ultimately, the idea is to try to connect these people and to try to connect different ideas, different themes. You know, when bands make artwork or write lyrics, it's like we're trying to draw from these different things that we all find interesting. We're trying to put it into something that you can relate to. Dillinger fans don't simply have Dillinger in common. There's no Where we're coming from, a lot of people associate us with like a, a Slayer or a Pantera who are very narrow and great at what they do and we love that, but at the same time I feel like those bands kind of painted themselves into a corner that yeah. we very early were like, we don't want to be in that corner. And with all these member changes and everything, we're always just trying to expand that you know, palette even more. Like, okay, where can this guy take us? We don't want to replace the guy before him. We want to get the guy who's gonna take it to the next level. You have to be, you know, on a journey, going somewhere new and doing something new. How, you know, I don't understand how people are happy doing the same thing over and over again. As soon as something gets started in the underground, because of how instantaneous everything is, the mainstream absorbs the most 
the most common denominator easily digested fat. It is a little irritating, but you know that's uh, the nature of things. I'm not. Some, it's not something that I. And that just and that just pushes the whole thing anyway, because then the more that happens, the, the faster it gets stale, yeah. and the faster people are like, oh, that's just passe. That's that's old. That's dated. A lot of people mistake the superficial elements of our band for the important thing. Like a lot of people talk about like the time changes and the you know mathy stuff or and when we're live shows people talk about you know how violent, violent it is yeah, and how aggressive it is. And the thing that is honestly more insulting to me, and I know that people don't mean it to be, is when there's a band that sounds a lot like us and they're like, You guys are our biggest inspiration, we sound just like you and we're like, that's actually the opposite of what we're trying to do. I would be I would rather you tell me that you sound like, you know, uh, a gorilla hitting a xylophone, but we're your biggest inspiration. We want to reach out to, to people. Like, I don't yeah. feel like I mean, we're... we want to be relatable is what I'm kind of getting at. You know, at the same time, the music you know, is not really going to be any more palatable. It's hopefully that you'll give it the time. And sometimes it's a time bomb, you know, like last night I had some kid come up to me and say, I saw you in 2002 and I booed you. But, you know, I'm sorry and I get it now. That happens a lot because that kid got poked in 2002 and then he remembered the poke and then came back around and was just like, okay. Because he know. grew out of the band that he came to see. And there's tons of things like that. And whether it's live or within the context of one song or a whole record, you know, there is that kind of storyline that we're trying to express and get you to understand and feel too.